the Torah, not just from Chassidut and themselves, how to be the best person. Without completing ourselves, it's become, becoming complete, a complete, uh, healthy. <clears throat> so as you can, you can see from my external trimmings that I'm, I'm of the Hasidic persuasion, and, uh, and so that story is on the way as well. It depends on what, what we're learning. So I was really excited about this year, and, and, and my wife was like, "Wow, it's like it's like it's like going back like 20 years. It's like you're the same excitement that you first you first started teaching again." Because you know, I only get to be with you guys one once a week for a short little window. So I was thinking, what what should we learn together? There's so many things. There's too many things. So I said, we have to go to, for the heart. And so we're going to learn. We'll start today. We'll see how much we 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 do. We're going to learn in in the Sefer Tanya, which I'm sure many of you guys, if not all of you, have have opened up or have learned before. I'm getting a getting a no and lots of yeses. So 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 for for those that's your first time, give out. We can say Shechianu. And for those that it's not, we can also say Shechianu because every time you open the Tanya, it's Mamash a big bracha. So for those of you have it, we're going to do Perk Lamed Lamed Beit, the thirty. Second chapter of Tanya. Um, so I thought I thought there would be like five of them that we could share. Maybe maybe uh, next time we can make some 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 copies. Broken there next to lessons of time. That one that yeah that's one. So that's one. And uh, up up in the library in the the Hebrew library, there's a, there there should be a bunch of them. So next time. I'll come a few minutes early and I'll bring them down. Um, if you know where they are, I'll go get them. You know, they, they, I haven't been here in two years, so I, I don't, I don't want to send you on a wild goose if chase. You, well, no, no, if, if you go in there, you ask someone who's like, what's older? It looks like we've been here a while. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so, so there was lots of uh, my, uh, my, I would say my, uh, my first go-to. In teaching Hasidis is always from the Piyasetz Nerebi, from the Eish Kodesh, who was the Rav Kalon Miskalman Shapira, who is, is some, some people call him the worst. Beautiful to learn, but it's kind of like opening up the, a, a, a safer and learning, you know, from the beginning to the end. So I figured for today, as a get to know you type of uh, shir, we would we would start, and, and then you would like, you know, you guys know what to do. Just, you know, I could come in and we could do select pieces of Hasidus each time. I just wanted to say, for those who have their phone copy in front of them, you have Safaria, there is a time. Under Great. And, you know, different pieces. Sometimes it'll be like, you know, a one We could. That's one option. Another option is we could do uh, Parsha. The a parsha Hasidus on the parsha, uh, or maybe even Tanya. Tanya is a little bit more complex, but the student's obligation start the sefer. You know, each week go th and go through the sefer. You know, after after a couple of months, you know, half a year, whatever, you learn le learn the whole sefer together. Um, I ended up I, usually in Mechomir. That's what that's how I taught. Pick one sefer, learn it from beginning to end, because I found that it gives a tremendous sense of accomplishment. You learned a whole sefer. You know, not just a piece here and a piece there. Um, which in general, I'll just put in a plug for that. Uh, I, I, uh, there is a, a, a minor counter argument to that, which is some people like like some people are here, most people here are here for at maximum one year. Right. So if you're not getting like the entire Tanya, you can't. If you're studying only once or twice a week for an hour, you cannot get through the whole Tanya in a year. Right. Right. Exactly. And 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 another another uh, another counter argument. And, and what you're saying, and not to learn a whole saver, is that sometimes if a person feels, oh, I missed a couple of weeks, well, I already, I already know what, don't know what's going on, so forget about it. But if it's just, you know, like piece by piece, so, so, so you don't feel like you're missing out. Um, but, uh, but I will say, I will say, yeah. No, I don't want to interrupt her off. Okay, I'll just say that last point, that um, just as you guys as students in yeshiva, I, 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 there's almost nothing that I could suggest to you more highly when it, when it comes to your learning at least in one or two categories of your learning, whether it's in Halacha or Musa or Mishnah, whatever it is, pick something and make yourself a goal and go from the beginning to the end, work your way through something. Because a lot of times, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what happens, a lot of times come, guys come out of yeshiva, especially if you're only in yeshiva for six months or a year, or sometimes even longer. You know, Sometimes people come out four or five years in yeshiva and they have this answer. If you ask them the question, what did you learn? 
in your time in yeshiva. You know, bissel of this, a bissel of that. I learned a list, you know, part of this Gemara, part of this Mishnah. But at the end, sometimes, you, you know, you feel like, what did I come away with, right? Not, of course, that spiritually you came away with a lot and you grew and everything. But like, it's good to have something in your pocket that you feel like, yeah, I learned this, you know, from the beginning to the end. It gives, it gives, a, gives you a certain anchor in learning that nothing else quite does the same. So that's just a plug in parentheses. Are there certain svarim that would be too esoteric without a foundation, like to learn the spot emet? Well, that, that's why I'm here. You know, like, like uh, the, the way, uh, you know, that's a good uh, maybe introduction to, to Hasidus, that, that, the answer to that question. The reason why a lot of people don't learn Hasidus, <clears throat> uh, I mean, a lot of people do learn Hasidus, but the reason why some people are kind of like, I would say, nervous to, nervous to get in, to jump in, or they just kind of like, they don't, they, they don't want to jump in because they don't know, they don't understand what's being said over there. Most of the Hasidic Sfarim are written in a certain type of code. What is the code meaning? Meaning that what that particular tzaddik said over Shabbos or in a class, and they wrote it and the Rebbe checked it. But he's teaching a class to his students who had a tremendous background in Torah and Kabbalah. You know, it's, it, it wasn't to it wasn't to uh, beginning students who who don't didn't have those foundations, right? So it's written with the assumption that you already know uh, Aleph base of of Kabbalah, right? Most of the Hasidic Sfarim. And so they're not really written like a textbook. They're not really written like, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, linearly, right? It's like, you know, you, you jump in the middle. Um, there are a few exceptions to the rule. For to take the esoteric and to make it practical. Like to bring this into your life. It's supposed to be real. It's not supposed to be up there. The story of, uh, of the, the Baal Shem Tov, that the, uh, right, the, uh, the, 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 first, the first Rebbe of Chassidus, Baal Shem Tov, they asked him, what's your Chiddush? What, what did you do? What, what, you, what did you come to contribute? Everything that you said, everything that you teach, the, the Arizal taught 200 years ago. Right? You're just expounding on the Arizal, but you're really saying ultimately the same thing. So he said, you're right. I'm not saying anything new. The only difference is, is I'm translating it, so to speak. Meaning the Arizal came to show us everything that's happening in the higher spheres, in the spiritual worlds. Right? He paints us a map. If you read the Arizal, it's kind of like, it's, it's like, I don't know, microbiology. It's like, it's super technical about this world, that world, this world. If you read about the creation of the world in the Arizal, it's like this tremendously long teaching before you even get to anything like of the physical world. Like, all oh, this happened, this happened, this happened. It's super technical, right? So if you read it without any introductions or without any, you know, uh, Rebbe that's explaining how is this practical to your life? So you don't know how it's practical to your life. It's, it seems like kind of just like, you know, uh, scientific. Oh. Yeah, it's like information. So the Baal Shinto said, the Arizal showed you what's happening up there. I'm showing you what's happening in here. Here. You know, the couple minutes before Adam, Adam Arishon was created. Just historically. I, I always say, I would joke, it's not really a joke. I say, like, imagine if we could have a biography of Avram Avinu. Right? This is Nassim. And, uh... Nice to meet you. Micha Hyman. Nassim. <clears throat> imagine, if you, you know, right? Today, biographies are so detailed. Right? And imagine if we could, Avram Avinu, Yitzchak Avinu, Moshe Rabbeinu. You know, Moshe Rabbeinu fled, fled Mitzrayim. He ran, he ran to Midian. He's there for 40 years. Right? It goes like this in the Chumash. Right? We know very, very little. How much would we love to know those details? So why didn't Chazal teach us those details? They gave us a little bit of a window. Right? You, you want to sit here? Sit. They gave us a little, you know, there's Midrashim here and there. But for the most part, we don't really know so much. What, what are the things that they did share? Meaning, how, did they, how were they so selective in what they shared with us and, and what they didn't share with us? The, the, th the only things they shared with us are things that we need in order to serve God better. Meaning the Torah is super practical. The Torah is practical, right? Matter of fact, there's even a question, um, why did the Torah start with this, the creation of the, of the, of the world? Right, you, guys, you guys saw this maybe in Rashi, in the first Rashi in, in the Chumash. It says, <clears throat> it says, this Torah should have started with our first mitzvah that we received as a nation, which was, who knows? Calendar. Calendar. Rosh Chodesh. Rosh Chodesh. Rosh Chodesh. Right. 
Chodesh Hazeh Lachem. So it says that the, the Torah should have started with that. Meaning we got mitzvahs before, but that was our first national mitzvah that we got, right? So why should the Torah have started with that? Torah is, it's Torah from Lashon Moreh, to teach. It's to teach us how to serve God. That's what the purpose of the Torah is. It's not a history book, right? It's got... Hashem knew that there's going to be nations that are going to say, hey, Israel does, isn't, 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 doesn't belong to the Jewish people. Right, so Hashem had to say, well, really, I created the world, and I decided who gets what, and this is really for the Jewish people. Right, so the whole Sefer Bereshis, according to that first Rashi, is really just a contract, right? a, land, a deed to the land here in Israel. <clears throat> right? But the premise still stands. You guys get it. The premise is, the, the, the purpose of the Torah is to teach us what to do. Right? So, therefore, we don't have all the details, historical details of all the lives of our forefathers and right we have select stories and details and all of it is just supposed to it's, it's our tradition is that it's only things that are of practice to serve them. that was my purpose in revealing what i revealed the arizal came and he revealed things that that nobody nobody knew before right and were accepted universally by all, by all of cloud so but not everybody understood what that meant, you know? Like, you guys know, the Baal Shem Tov came, he said, look, the water carrier, the wood chopper, those guys are just as important as the biggest Talmud Chochem, as the biggest, right? Because in, in those days, you guys know that there was a tremendous uh, gap. There was a hierarchy in the Jewish world, and somebody who wasn't a Rav, or who wasn't uh, wealthy, was considered a nobody. And they felt bad about themselves, and therefore, if you feel bad about yourself, so how do you think your davening looks? Well... My dominating also isn't important. And why should I start time to learn the little Torah that I do know how to learn? Because it's also not important because I'm a nobody. Hashem to come and say, no, every single Jew. And not only that, I'm going to translate for you the highest concepts, the most esoteric concepts that only the biggest tzaddikim in the clo most closed circles know about. And I'm going to translate them in a way that every single Jew, the simplest Jew, can understand them and use them practically. That's chassidus. So, that was a very long answer to your question. The answer is, there's nothing... What was the question? <laughs> are, aren't some parts of, Has, of Hasidus more too esoteric for us to learn if we don't have the proper background, the proper Agdamas? So the answer is, that's what I'm, that's what I'm here for. That I have a little bit more background. I'm a, a, you know, a little bit longer in the, in the, in the, in the base measures than, 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 than some of you, right? Maybe all of you. And, and, and so the things that are esoteric, that's what I'll, I'll try to make them as much as I can, make them... Uh, Applicable and practical and understandable. Mm -hmm. So let's jump in. Yeah? <coughs> we, we have. Uh, for, for whoever wants to follow along, I'm, I'm going to read everything and translate everything also for, for, for those that. So this is the 32nd chapter of Tanya. Uh, 32 is Gematria, is the word Lev, heart. And so, so everybody talks about how this is the heart of the this is the heart of the Tanya, the heart of Chasidut, the heart of of it all. Um, you know, I, I could have like you know, work, we, I could have worked our way in, but I said I'm going to just go straight straight for the jugular. Which which part are we Lamed Beit. And let's jump in. Perak Lamed Beit. Do you guys have a preference if I do you, if I do like Israeli Hebrew or Ashkenazi? I use a self. I, so to me, this is to me this is fantastic the way you're pronouncing it. To me, this True. is this is um, peak, top, top tier, top perfect. Top it's top top. Top. Whatever you're but, doing, however, in your own home. You, all right, okay. For the sake of our friend Hirsch, I think you should go for. Oh, how do you describe the, the Hirsch? I didn't get the I didn't get the introduction on Hirsch. How is it relevant to the top of the shoe? I wouldn't it's ready. Okay, okay. okay. So does everybody, if I use a tough, will everybody understand? Will everybody follow? Yeah, yeah. yeah. prefer a soft. Prefer a soft. So I'll do it back and forth, but but in, in, I do I do a soft. I'm, I'm you know I'm, I'm, my, my 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 minhagim are chasidish minhagim, but when I well, always when I've taught mechonir, I always use a tough, right? Because it's uh, it's a uh, you know. Shavele kol nefesh. Everybody, you know, that's that's where. Okay, so here we go. Perek lamed beit vehine al yedek kiyum advarim hana. So this is a continuation of the previous chapter. Says the Tanya, when when uh, through the fulfilling of what was said above, 
which now he's going to explain exactly what, what that means. Liyod gufo nivzev nimas benav, that his body should be despised in his eyes. Rak simchato tiye simchat anefesh, and that his simcha should just be the simcha of the soul. Levada. I'm going to pause here and, and explain what that means because that could be that could sound really anti-Hasidic, really in a certain sense, right? When you guys think of Hasidic, what do you think? You like fasting and like and you know Gilgul simcha, simcha. simcha, kugel, herring, you know, like a uh, schnapps, right? Uh, Hasidim don't get together without something on the table, you, you know. What about the locks and bagels? <laughs> locks and bagels, right? You can't, uh, you, you, you can't, you can't be a Hasid without a little with a shtickle, uh, you right? So. Uh, <laughs> So what is the Rebbe saying here? The 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 Lama bit. So uh, on page uh, mim mim hey mim alus uh, that the body should be despised in our eyes, right? What does that mean? We don't. Second, before the Baal Shem Hakadosh, the way of Hasidim, what was called Hasidim before, tzaddikim, that they they wanted to atone for all their sins and they wanted to like smash down their body to like totally overcome any type of physical you know desires any type of base uh, right feelings motives in their body and they would do they would do fasts tons of fasts like crazy amounts of fasts fasted right if you guys would see what's written in the in the writings of the Ariza how many fasts the person has to do for each thing if a person gets angry 84 fast right I mean, how many times did I get angry today <laughs> right for one time getting angry right Fast, they would do Gilgule Shelig. You guys don't know what that means. They would go out and roll around in the snow. They would, they would, they would tovel in ice water. Just not, not because of because there was no other mikvah. There was a hot mikvah. They would go to the ice water because it hurt, and they were trying to, they were trying to beat down their body. The Baal Shem Tov came and he told the students, under no circumstances are you supposed to fast. He says, it, and I'll tell you this as a secret. I can get in trouble for this, but I'm gonna tell you anyway. That he said, if I could, the Baal Shem Tov said, if I could. I would I would nullify the fast even that the sages made for us except for except for uh, Yom Kippur of course because Shabbos made but except for 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 Tisha B'av. but like Asara B'Tevet I would do away if I if I could Tanit Esther well Tanit Esther is a little bit different but uh, but I would get rid of those even I, but I can't he said but but you none of you should be fasting and you shouldn't do any sigufim any type of self what do you call it, flagellation affliction or affliction afflicting yourself you shouldn't do it. So you know what they said then? This is the part that's shocking. The students of the, 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 the Baal Shem Tov, these were serious, you know, of the Hashem. They said, Rebbe, you took everything away from us. How are we supposed to serve Hashem now? We can't fast, right? We can't go rolling in the snow. What, what, what are we, how are we supposed to get close to Hashem? So the Baal Shem Tov told them, he said, he said There's, if, you, if you bring these three things into your heart, so you don't need any fasts, except for, of course, he said, Avas Hashem, to love Hashem, Avas Torah, to love the Torah, the Avas Yisrael, and to love your fellow Jew. If you can draw those things into your heart, you're going to bring yourself a much higher level than any fast in the world that you can do. Rolling the stone. Right. And so, and, and, and also, we know, like, again, like, that, you know, eating is actually, it's not, you know, I was joking before about the gogol and the herring, but like, eating is a serious part of, of the avoda of, of Hasidim, Right. In the Arizal, in, 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 the, in, the, in the Kabbalah, eating, what happens when we're eating? Why do we have to eat? It's an amazing thing if you think, you know, like, we'd like to save all of our time for learning Torah. Think about how much time goes into working so that I could have money to buy food, preparing food, eating food, expelling food, cleaning up after the food, right? It's like our whole lives are about food when you're, when you're a parent of little children, so you really feel that, right? Like, Rabbanu Shalom, like, don't you want me to learn Torah at some point? Why, why all this food? So the Kabbalah, Kabbalah and, the, and the Chassidus Farm talk about how eating is a huge spiritual thing. But we have to understand how to do it properly so it's not, we're not just doing it like animals, right? So if that's true, so now it's really crying out in a very loud voice here, what is the Tanya talking about? That our body should be disgusting in our eyes. Our body should be nullified in our eyes. So I think the, the, the way to answer that is through what it says about you guys know uh, something that you've seen in the Torah that probably bothered you. I wonder if you asked the question. It says that Yaakov Avinu had two wives, right? And how did he feel about them? It says that Rachel he loved, and Leah was, do you guys know the word? Snuah. In modern Hebrew, that means hated. 
Sinah. Right, from Sina. How could it be? He, he hated his wife. Leah. It says that Rachel was jealous of her sister Leah. Why? Because Leah was the biggest tzaddikus in the generation. Rachel knew that. Right? Yaakov Avinu is not, you know, it's not because Rachel's prettier than uh, Leah. We shouldn't think that, uh, that that's, uh, that's the level that they were functioning on. Right? How could it be? Snua? So the Mephash and the commentary say over there, it doesn't mean hated like despised. It means that his main, his main dagesh, his main focus, his main marriage was with Rachel. And in comparison with that, it was as if Leah was hated. Chas v'shalom, to think that she really was hated. He loved her, and they had tremendous shalom bias, and it was beautiful, and it was givaldic. But there was something there that was a little bit less than it was with Rachel. And therefore, to, to highlight that, that difference, the Torah uses the word snua. So I believe here that that's the kavona also. Uh, people might argue with me on this, right? And I'm, I'm open to that. I, I, I don't have the only parish here. But I believe that... that, that uh, Because our bodies have so, right? We, we, have the two, we have the struggle between the two voices, our body and our soul. All the time it's happening, right? I remember when I, when I, was, when I was at Wachri, I don't know if it's still like this, but for the, some of you guys have morning shear in, in, in here, and like uh, sometimes you wake up late, you miss breakfast or whatever, and you're hungry, you come to shear because we're claiming. If you didn't come to shear, we're claiming, but you know, we'd really, he was, the, he was the old generation, right? The windows would be open. You know, we didn't, I don't think there was an air conditioning in here back then. And uh, I'm, I, it's, I'm now it's starting to sound like I used to walk in the snow to, you know, but the, whatever, you know, so a, lot, a lot nicer than it used to be. So you're hungry, you're sitting here in cheer, you're falling asleep a little bit, and then all of a sudden angels, would, you'd, you'd get a waft of, of uh, the bakery goods from angels. They used to come to the whole neighborhood, you could smell it, right? And I remember thinking, like, man, should I excuse myself and go get some breakfast, or should I stay in cheer, right? It's like, it was like the, the battle, the, the, the body and the soul, right? I'm not going to tell you who won, but, uh, but uh, it's, a, it's a battle. You hear, you hear the voice of your soul. Your soul is telling you to do good things, right? Whatever it is, have, you know, be forgiving at this moment. Say the nice thing. Don't say the bad thing, right? Go learn Torah. You know, push yourself, right? And your body has a voice that is much louder, is saying many more things, and we're much more accustomed to listening to the voice of our body than we are to our soul, right? How many of us, and you don't have to raise hands here, but how many of us can say that we've had like a, you know, on a regular basis, or not even, just occasionally, we've had like a physical urge, and, you know, but we had a spiritual, we were focused on a spiritual goal at the moment, we are like learning, let's say, right? And then, and we, and we say, okay, I'm going to push my physical urge away, or I'm going to put it aside for the time being, and I'm just going to focus on my spiritual. Like most of us, you know, if, if I, I'm thirsty, I'm going to go, I'm going to get, get something to drink, right? I'm tired, I'm going to go take a schlaf, right? So, you know, I'm, when you're here in yeshiva, so you're really working to, to increase that, the, the focus on the spiritual, to listen to the soul, it doesn't mean to overcome it, right? There's, this, there's something called pius aguf. You have to to appease the body. Uh, there's a, a a rabbi of mine was uh, was when he was a bacher. He was in the, he was in a pizza pizza shop late at night, and all of a sudden a, a, a well known Russian shiva came in, and he got pizza and a Coca Cola. He couldn't believe it. Yeah, it was all Bachrim, you know, just hanging out at the end of the day, and this Rosh Hashim was in there eating pizza and coke. So he, he had the, you know, he was a real tzaddik, this Rav of mine. He, so he said, I have to ask him. Clearly, there's something to be learned here. It's not just because he had a, you know, woke up with a, you know, to get him at midnight. So this, my, one of my Rabbani, Rav Nochem Chaimowitz. He's a Belzer Chos, a very, very special person. So he went up to the Rosh Hashim and he asked him, he said, look, I was, I was in the middle of learning a sugi and Gemara, and I was... I was uh, struggling because my body, I was getting hungry and my body was saying, I'm tired, enough. Look, you already learned a lot today. And I heard my, I heard my body kept on talking, kept on talking, kept on talking, it was distracting me from my learning. So I told the body, listen, I'm going to give you everything you want. I'm going to give you a treat even. I'm asking you to leave me alone for one hour. Let me finish my learning in peace and then I'm going to give it to you, okay? Deal? Deal. And then I was able to learn the sugi, but you have to pay up afterwards, you know? You can't, you can't, trick, the, you can't trick the body. Like and and not pay up, right? So, so that, from the minute we're born, right? 
right? When you're a baby, like it's about food, it's about sleeping, it's about giving my toy, it's about, right? Even when you're young, even, even many adults live their whole life like that, right? So if we want, which is what the, what the Tzadik is going to teach us in a second, or what he, what, what he said is, our goal is to live a life of, of, of a neshama, a neshama a life, a life where the, the, the guiding principle in my life is spirituality, period. It doesn't mean I, don't, I, I deny physicality, but it means that physicality is serving my spirituality. It's a part of my spirituality. Not, I have physicality. Identify with most. So our goal is to identify with the soul. Right? And in order to do that, and this is what I believe the Tanya is saying, and I'm sorry to speak so long about this, but I think it's a really important point. Um, the, I believe what the Tanya is saying here is that since that voice of your body is so much louder and you're so much more accustomed to it, needs as, as a value within themselves is mukta. You know what I mean? It's like to eat just because to eat. No, I eat because I have to eat. I eat because the Kodesh who made me that I have to eat. There's sparks in the food. There's energy that I need in order to be able to, right? But just as it ends within itself, Right? That should be something in my eyes that's like, that's pasta, that's not, that's, not, that's not for me. And I need, to, I need to always check in when I'm having a physical urge. I'm going to have to check in with myself. This is what I believe that he's saying here. To check in, to see like, is this really serving me? Or is this just a physical taiva? Right? Now, in, in, Torah, in a Torah life, all of our physical needs uh, should be met. They should be met, and not just uh, as a after as an afterthought. Our phys- we, we live a we live a physical life, and we're not denying that Hakadosh Baruch Hu gave us a body. He gave us a body for a purpose, right? If he wanted to, right? Like uh, you know, if Hashem wanted, He could have made all of us be born in you. Decided, He knows what He's doing. We don't need to be an uber to try to be wiser than wiser than Hakadosh Baruch Hu. Hashem gave us a body. He gave us needs. He gave us urges. We we are supposed to enjoy those things. But we're supposed to enjoy them in the right context. How do I put that physical urge into my spiritual life? Because my spiritual life is what I'm doing, right? So that that I believe is the pshat. Um, so again, so that was really what the Rebbe was talking about in the last chapter, and he's just referencing it now. So I'm going to go back in. I'm going to start from the beginning and read it again. When we uphold these things that we said above. His body is despised in his eyes in that sense that we spoke about. I added the vav. In his true joy in life is the joy of the soul, meaning his, his true pursuits, his true orientation is spiritual. Right? That's his joy in life. Levada. The Rebbe says levada only. Like those are my joys. So this, that is the key to make it an easy path to come to fulfill the mitzvah of loving your fellow Jews. Do it the other, right? So he's going to explain it in the most beautiful way. And he says, but he says, to love every single Jew from the greatest down down to the smallest. Why does he add that? My, my commentary is that every person has different people in our lives that it's, it's easier to love and some that it's less easy to love. People, he's, 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 he's in a different world. I, I can't relate to him. Some people, my family, I can love. Some people, my family is harder to love and it's, it's strangers that I can love, right? But how do you come to a place where, where you're really able to say uh, something that is it's really kind of like uh, this like super lofty, almost imaginary state? Imagine like having true love in your heart for every single Jew, from the biggest to the smallest, from the from the farthest to the closest. So he says the the the, the Balatani says the the shortcut to getting there is this: what we said to stress the the soul over the body. <laughs> Sorry, back inside. That he puts his body. So we need it, right? 
the definition of man in this world is the body with the, is the soul with the body, right? But the body is it's our vehicle which with which we get around in this world. That's the right. Without it, we can't do mitzvahs. We can't serve God in this world. But it's you know at the end after 120 years, so the body goes back to its you know its place, and the soul goes back to its place, right? And the soul is really where we are, right? We we depart from that body, right? But the body is so important, just also in parentheses, the body is so important that when, when, when at the end of the whole story, there's going to be triata metim, and we're going to come back into our bodies. Right? Our bodies are going to be reconstituted in a, in a different way, but, uh, but we're going to have to be in our bodies for triata right? I have a question. Um, you just said we need to love our we are nothing, and how you can repair uh, these uh, situations to love yourself back again right. so that you are uh, ready to love others. How right. do you do that? Right. Does anybody else have that same question? Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah. Yeah, that's, a, that's a massive question. As a matter of fact, it's, it's so massive of a question what you just asked that I would, I, would, uh, I would say that that might be the uh, most pressing issue of our generation. That might be you self love. It's it's our, our right. It's the Chazal said the sages said that that uh, it was with a seat over here if you were to. Gen Z and millennials, Gen Z and millennials, this generation. Everyone. Well, I, I don't know exactly how to how to define. Uh, you know, I'd say maybe the last fifty years now something like that. I don't, I don't know exactly, but you know, of generation. Um, this is a question that, uh, piggybacking, piggybacking on what he's saying, and then on the opposite yeah. side, you know, you've got love, respect of yourself yeah. on that side. On the on the opposite side, it seems like there's a generation, actually, you know, in America, that is completely in love with itself. Mm, yeah. right. So huh. interesting. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, 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 what? How do you? Yeah. What's the right? Yeah. Well, side? that's a response to that. I, I don't. I don't really. I don't believe it's true love of the self. I think it's 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 a it's, it's a certain type of uh, almost addiction. Narcissism. Yeah. It's a, it, a, 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 yeah. It's it, it's a it's a it's a running away from it's a bricha. It's an escape from from the pain of of a, of a feeling of of emptiness of, of right. So it's occupying myself with with something to fill me up to distract me to you know anything you know a, 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 a false inflated sense of self. Right, but in the end of the day, right, well, the person comes back to their own quarters, and they, 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 they there is an emptiness. But I don't know. Maybe, I, maybe I. Uh, you know, to love the Jew like yourself. How how do you love them like yourself? Because it's not like you know you're not being nice to someone next to you. It's you know they're not being nice to you. You don't feel that you want to uh, continue being nice. To them, you know. But those don't really need the love. The ones friendly. Right. In fact, uh, you make uh, any noise. You know that it's their mission to make life harder. Mm -hmm. You know, how do you um, show them kindness? Uh, when someone's been, uh, I'll say it in uh, technical terms. When someone's been a jerk to you. Yeah. So how do you how do you Rabbi? What time are we, what time are we going to? What time? Uh, this uh, now you're in there. Open Shir Chasidis. There's no more time. The clock stopped working. Everything. Uh, <laughs> Take the option over there. The option over there. Times are a little. Right. <laughs> uh, we, had, we had another question. Um, so what what would be better? Someone who doesn't have any love for themselves at all. They don't have anything. Or someone who loves themselves, even if it's a false sense of, you know, them being narcissistic, but they at least have something. Right. And um, I think about that question. Yeah. I say one more question, then I start to give us a little bit of an answer. So, so they think they love themselves, but really, it's just it's miserable. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. 
It's right. the tachposet for them. It's like the, the yeah. Tachpos. And, and, and again, like I, I really identify that, you know, and you can, you can say, well, that's, you know, just a therapist and that's why you're saying that. And you're, you're probably right. That, that um, I view that as a, as a certain form of addiction. Uh, all, all addiction, I mean, like once a thing becomes like a physiological addiction, it's on physical, you know, but, but the cause of every kind of pain in the book, you know, for whatever reason in the book, but I'm running away. And this makes me feel better, and I don't feel the pain when I'm in this thing or doing this thing or doing this activity, right? And so, hyper focus of the body and physicality is really a, an escape from the world. pleasure and you know all kinds of you know philosophies and stuff. But like in the end of the about that, but the, but this is this is a true story. I was on a moshav, moshav somewhere in the middle of Israel for Shabbos once, and. Um, and one of the guys that grew up there told this told this story. It's an unbelievable story. He said that uh, there used to be an old older gentleman in the in the Moshav who was a Holocaust survivor, and he he was known as a as a as a great man. And he you know he 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 like unlike many he 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 kept his you know religiosity after the war, and he and so he was like a part of the Moshav. He was like a known person. I, I was. To dive next to him, so there, it was Shachris, and they got to the bracha just before Shema, which ends Habocher be'amo Yisrael be'ahava. Hashem, blessed are you, a God that chose chooses the nation of Israel with love. So this man has tzitzis in his hand. He's getting ready to say Shema. He says, "Baruch Ata Hashem Hamoitzi Lecha Minanet." Shema Yisrael Hashem Adokinu. Right? So he said, "Okay, maybe he's getting old." You know, he's lit, he was right there. He said. Yeah, I'm next to him tomorrow and see. The third day, Chazaka is a. Ooh, that's a I don't know how to say it. In, in, there's a halachic term. Once something happens three times, so concrete. It's a, It's like yeah, it's like concrete. It becomes right. Like for instance, if a person someone asks, it, it even has a halachic weight. Meaning, if if you, a person fasts, erev rosh chodesh. Right now, we just we just said that we don't fast anymore. <laughs> but but let's say a person fasts on Erev Rosh Chodesh, and then he does it the next month and the next month three times. Now he did it three times. Now it's a chazaka. He has to keep doing it. Yeah. It becomes it becomes a chazaka from the word chazak. It it became strengthened. It became solidified. That. Meaning now it has halachic. It's like he made a neder. Now I'm going to be doing it every month, right? So, so is anyway. Is he required to do it every month? Or yeah, it, and let, but now he, it's like he made a neder, and now he has to go. He has to nullify the neder. Yeah, it's like how you say it, renounce your vows. Right, exactly. Nullify. Right. So, so back to our story. So he said, he said, I'm going to go the third day and see if he says amotzi lechem in and he went, and sure enough, he said amotzi lechem in So he said, I'm going to say something to him, and. And he and he said he said, uh, sir, I want to show you what it says in my sitter. <laughs> my sitter says, he says he says, you think I don't know what it says in the sitter? Of course I know what it says in the sitter. I went I didn't go to Cheder. I went to I went to Talmud I went to I had a Jewish education. I know exactly what it says there. He says so why why don't you say it? He said look. I went through the Holocaust. I was in camps. The hell that I went through I can't describe. And nobody knows and I, nobody can understand except for somebody that went through it. After I saw all that pain, I experienced all that pain, it's too hard for me to say that Hashem chooses us with love. I'm just not in a place where I can say that. But what can I do? I love Hashem. I can't, I can't say this with a I can say this with, wow. my, with my... Right? I mean, there's, there's many levels to that story which are very beautiful lessons, I think. But even with his pain, that voice of like... Of his neshama, like he's giving it, he's giving it a right. He hears it, and he's giving it, he's giving it a voice. Other people run away. There, there's a, there's a, a Jew I know. He's a, a, a beautiful uh, Chabad Chassid today. He lives in Florida. We were students together in university in Austin, and uh, there was a Chabad house there, and that was the only Jewish thing that was happening in the whole city back then. I don't know what it's like today, but uh, it was in the middle of campus, like uh, like the campus, like the dorms where the houses and housing and stuff was, and so. If, if this is a here, I'll do, draw it here. If uh, here's the university campus with all like the buildings and stuff, 
right? So he he was like he was in a place that he was like he knew that he knew he like he he couldn't stop hearing that voice in his head. Yes, Hakadosh Baruch there is Hashem in the world, and the Torah is probably true. But he's like, but I still haven't had enough fun in my life yet. So he, wasn't ready. he would walk like you know like three blocks out of the way. <laughs> So that he, so that he so that he shouldn't have to pass the Chabad house because if he if he passed the Chabad house then ding, ding, ding. then he, right he would know oh gosh I should really be huh say it again these raptors today right but I think for him it was more the way he described it to me was more I, he didn't want his own voice to like get too much stronger oh gosh I should really go in there they need a minion probably right now right the rabbi's probably giving me a class right now oh gosh what am I doing and I'm just going you know to play frisbee on campus right I should really go in there. He didn't want, right? But at a certain point, you can't deny that voice, right? And if a person spends his whole life denying his voice, so then his children will not be able to deny it. And he marries out. So then at a certain point, one of his offspring will hear that voice and will come back, right? And right? Yeah, there's a... That, that, right? It's always there. It's, it's, it, it'll never be able to go away. In the end, it's going to, it's, it's going to win. But... We have to, those of us that are trying our best, right, we're already convinced, we're already signed on, right? So now our job is to teach, teach you guys today was, was this, and there's a piece in the Likutei Moran from Rabbi Nachman that's more about this subject that you're talking about, uh, which is about self-love and the whole issue of, you know, uh, lo, low feelings of, of self-worth and of, of self-esteem, self-value, and therefore, how is it possible for me to love others if I don't love myself? There's no question. I'll say this as a just as a uh, um, prerequisite, so to speak. There's no question that if if I have issues with my own self love, then I will I will have a very very difficult time, if not impossible time, to really love other people. In most cases, there are people that they have a, an easy time loving other people, and they can't love themselves, right? But if you really look a little bit deeper in that. Really, their love of other people is all. It's, it's, there's also something not 100% uh, healthy about it, right? Ultimately, if we want the full health, the full shebang, so we need, we need. We'll say that after we, after we uh, that we will we'll learn that piece from from Rabbi Nachman, which is a super super important fundamental piece. And the emphasis is we could spend like the next 10 years talking about this subject about like self-love and like why is the why the issue of of uh, self-worth is such a pressing issue in our time uh, why it's driving so much depression which is the major the ma- most major pandemic of our time um, and and addictions and all kinds of things that are really being driven by that that pain right um, so we'll talk about it now the last thing I'll say about it is Rev um, Rav uh, Tversky, Rav Avram Tversky, Oliver Shalom, who just passed away this last year. Yeah, he was a he was an amazing person. He was the uh, the scion of a of a Hasidic dynasty of the Hornstaipel dynasty, and he decided that instead of becoming the Rebbe, he. Be- oh, my family. Ah, you have your family with Tversky? Tveri, my last name is Tveri. When I came here, because the last name is based on Tveri and Nizel, so I thought when I moved back here, I'm going to this nice last. And he. Service and addictions in America. Rehab, also rehab. And rehab, and he and he he uh, he wanted to publish a book at, at a certain point when he was younger. He took it to one publisher, they didn't accept it. Another one, they didn't accept it. Another one, they didn't accept it. He took it to 19 publishers that rejected him. And uh, and finally, the next the next one accepted it, and it became a huge hit. And after that, he wrote more than 80 books in his life, something like that, 70, 80 books. And, uh, and, and he said, he just passed away this last year at, at, at an old, 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 ripe old age, beautiful man. And he said, I, I wrote so many books, but the truth is I only, I only wrote one book in like 70 or 80 different ways. And the one book is How to Love Yourself. Right? And so he really, he really, he really, he really all of his time talk about it and, and, and he really goes deep into it. He's got one perspective. We'll talk about it, Bezot Shem. But uh, let's just go for one more minute. Um, and just finish finish this this last sentence that we were on. That if we're looking for one way, this is the Tanya's way. Um, 
look at the let's see the the big lines uh three lines down in where the after it says vad katan we already read it we should read it again to finish that sentence again there's many ways to come to the mitzvah of of after to really love your fellow jew this is a shortcut says the rabbi Right? It says, See, once he gets to a place where the body, it, the body's influence, the body's stress becomes, meaning the body's, uh, limits. not limits, uh, his focus on body becomes minimized and put in its proper proportion, right? Not disproportionate as it is in most people. And the greatness of the soul Right, the the focus of the of the of the of the soul and the spirit. Who could possibly grasp the greatness of the of the of the soul? Bishoshan and it. So the Rebbe says, when you when you stress that, you think about that, you realize that, you start to identify with that. And the body is minimized, but this is but the soul is so high, not just your soul, but everybody's soul. That all, all of these Jewish souls are really together as one. They really have that same source. They all come from that same place. This one was born in Alabama, this one was born in, you know, Texarkana. But then but whatever it is, but they're, they're, it's the same thing. They ended up in the different right? It's like the rays of the, what's that? Right, yeah, I, it would be surprising, but you know, I've been surprised in my life. And all, all of Kaiser, we have one father. And therefore, all of Am Yisrael is called brothers, Mamish, really, bro, real brothers, though. In the, in, in, in the sense that even, you right, I, I, I'll never forget. Uh, my my first Purim in Eretz Yisrael, and I was in. I ended up in Meir Sharim. And uh, you know, it, it, nice what's a Texan boy like you doing in a place like this, right? And and and, and there's a guy. He only spoke Yiddish. I only spoke English at the time. And and you know, we had had a couple of l'chaims, of course, because it was Purim. And and we ended up we ended up in this hug, bawling. He's crying. And there was there was some lady. I don't even know who she was. She was translating the Yiddish to the English, and I was and I was speaking the. Outpouring of, of love, of brotherly love. We can't speak the same language, right? I'd love to meet him again today to see, see, see where he is. I wouldn't recognize him, but hey, doesn't matter where you come from, what your experience is, these are your brothers. These are your brothers. Yeah, but, but it sounds like a Rebbe story, like this, a Rebbe story in the making. Like, you know, you, you were telling us this anecdote, but then this Purim, like this coming Purim in a month, you're going to find yourself in a shower and he's gonna, you're going to walk into. <laughs> it could be. I'm sure I've met him before, after, afterwards, several times. We just don't, right? But uh, yeah, halavah. There's that shin. But the the point is, is that if what do you identify with? If you identify, if you identify as this, the place where I'm from, this is my, this is the society. These are the, the that's where I come from. Those are my experiences. And you, you know, Jew from Mehran, you Jew from Uzbekistan, you Jew from Canada, have a totally different experience than me. What do we have in common already? Brothers, I'm brothers with my neighbors. That we had, that we went to the same school. We played on the same football team. Brothers with you, we don't share anything in common. That's because you're looking at it from a body perspective. When you realize that the soul, my soul and your soul, came from the same cradle, right? You hear that, you guys? It's a, it's such an unbelievable point. Our souls, we we are brothers. We're just meeting today. Let's cry that we're just meeting our brother for the first time. Finish the sentence, and I'll come to you. Mm-hmm. That's where that's where we end. The only the only difference is our bodies are different. If you if you if you fill up, if you fill up water from if you, from from a from an ocean, these is this the same water? No, it's different, right? It's the exact same water. It comes from the same source. It's in two different cups. If I'm looking at my body as who I am, and I'm looking at your body as who you are, and when I say body, I don't just mean physical needs and, and that. Your experience, your language, your, your 
in mine. So then we're not. It's hard for me to love you because we're different. Unless we happen to, you know, both like Hasidus and herring and bluegrass and, right? So, but, but if not, so then like, how can I love you? Because we're, we're just too different. No. I have to look at the soul. If I look at, first of all, I have to look at myself as that soul. And this is also an answer to your question. And I have to look at you as a soul. And then I realize I, 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 I sidestep all those differences. Boundaries, all the boundaries you... Right. And then it's, and that's why the, that's what the Tanya says, it, this is a shortcut to coming to fulfill the mitzvah of loving your fellow Jew. Right, it's a very beautiful, very beautiful Nakuda, which I think is such a foundation, such a fundamental point of, of, of in general, how we're supposed to view ourselves, and all the more so how to, how to view our, our fellow Jews. Right? So, we talk about the for everyone. Right, so that's the, 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 the mitzvah, the, the, the actual mitzvah is we only have a mitzvah to love our, our fellow Jew okay. as, a, as a mitzvah. Meaning, if I don't do that, if I don't do that, so then I'm not fulfilling the mitzvah. Mm-hmm. However, you know, Rav, Rav Kook explains in, uh, I think in Midot Raya, he says, it's, he, he, he says in this language, we have Rav Kook, in, we have, uh, they call it the, the Shas Halavan, the white, the white Shas, like all of Rav Kook's books. He, he says in Midot Raya, he says that it's impossible not to love everything in this world. Except for evil, of course. But just one second. Oh, you want to read? Yeah. So one of the other rabbinim, Rabbi Aharon Rothman, he was discussing um, about Israel and loving the other nations as uh, within the context of the uh, creation of Hashem. He said they go hand in hand; that they don't necessarily contradict. Yeah, they're, they're absolutely not a contradiction. To the point, to the point where our geula is based off of the of people who aren't Jewish. Again, I have this book here, right? Ah. Right, right. That we call the gala. The, 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 yeah, from Israel. Uh, right. Before he came, we weren't able to get the Torah. Before right, right. Come, right, we right. Able to... So a, a person shouldn't think. A person shouldn't think. So one, one second. A person shouldn't think that like because I have a mitzvah to love my fellow Jew, that means that I don't have a that I that I or that I that I shouldn't love a non-Jew. It's not just like your your actual family, right? You have a, an obligation. Even in uh, like, let's take halachas of tzedakah. So it says, the, the, Even in your own family, a, a poor person in your family takes precedence over a poor neighbor. And you have a tzedakah to give, you have to give it to the one in your family first. It's your halachic obligation. The person in your city comes before a person in another city. Right? In your neighborhood, before another neighborhood. That's a, there's, a, there's a, an order here, right? Of course, we have to relate to our own family it, with a with an extra level of of uh, of of uh, importance of of, uh, of connection than we do with everybody else. That doesn't mean that we're not supposed to be connected with the world. That doesn't mean we're not supposed to love everybody. Chalila. What it means is that look, and maybe this maybe this is kind of a little bit of an answer to to your question. If I'm driving down the street in you know Karachi, where's Karachi? Uh, Pakistan. Pakistan. I'm, right, happen, I'm driving down the street and a guy cuts me off. Right, I'm pretty upset, and his 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 driving was a little bit uh, offensive, right? That's pretty, not, nothing like that happens in Israel, but look, you know, so that's why I'm going to Karachi, Dafka. But but uh, right, so I don't have a mitzvah to necessarily judge him favor. He did something wrong. My name is Jewish. Right, right. I'm going to get there. I don't have a I, I, if I if I am upset at him, I'm not transgressing a mitzvah from the Torah, right? Because that would be like a really uh, saintly level to expect of me, right? That anybody does anything that I, uh, right? I'm just totally in love with everybody no matter what, right? It's just, it, right. It's, it's like, it's, all, it's almost like superhuman, right? So to do that with everybody in the world is like, is a high level. We should, halavai, we'll be there, but you know, when, when you guys get there, please open up a class and I'm going to be your first student because that'd be wonderful. But when it comes to your fellow Jew, you are required to be, in that sense, like a saint. You are required to, to, to be above your nature, right? We have to learn how to do that. We have to learn what are the ways to do it, what are the, and what are the particular situations, and even the halachas of, of loving your fellow Jew. There's halachas there. But there's an expectation that's so high. And so for us to think that that should also apply to everybody in the world, it's, you know, Hashem doesn't expect that of us. But... You know, a person, uh, a person who, who who has scorn for you know anything that's not Jewish or anybody that's not Jewish, 
that's not coming from a Torah perspective. That's not coming from a person who's well seasoned in love of Hashem and love. Right? Once you love Hashem, you love His creations, right? You can see that they're doing bad. You can see that they're making mistakes, and that and and sometimes you can see that you have to even, you know, take care of that. And right in the sense that you have to stop them. You have to right, but you you also love. You cut. You come with love. You come with sensitivity, right? Mm -hmm. Talking about loving others uh, reminds me on the parasha we had last week in Mishpatayim, and because just imagine we have this situation. Uh, uh, I'm going to some place. I have a very big problem. I'm staying there alone. No one is going to help me. I feel very lonely and I'm very uh, confused. Situation. Inside of me, the voice inside of me will say, "Why I need to help him when I had this situation two weeks before? No one come to me, and this is exactly the point we need to get uh, yeah. awake, to get uh, stand up, and to, to to remember what we need to do, and don't yeah. uh, listen to the the inner voice of us." Absolutely, and we we need that push, we need that motivation from above, and also that expectation. Hashem, Hashem doesn't give us. Mitzvahs that he doesn't believe that we can, uh, that he doesn't know, that we can't fulfill, right? And that pushes us, you know, like uh, sometimes it's hard to get out of bed in the morning, right? But sometimes you need, some, uh, you, you know, if your boss is going to be upset at you, so you're, you're, you're going to pull yourself together and do it, right? Uh, so same thing, like you know that Kodesh Bocha has an expectation of you, and more than that, Hashem is not just your boss. Lahabdil Hashem is the one that created you, and he knows that you have the wherewithal, you have the ability to reach this. And I'm expecting this of you, and you're like, but I can't do it. But guess what? I created you. I know better than you. You can do it. And I want you to do it, and, 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 and now you got to figure out how to get yourself together to do it. Right? It's, a, it's, a, it's empowering. It's empowering. That's what favors Right, right. Okay, guys, I could. I, it, it's so sweet to live with you guys. I could go on all day, but I, um, I, I think you guys have been here a long time. We're gonna, we'll, we'll break now, Bez Hashem. Uh, we'll, Who did we'll you get your smicha? A yeshiva that does, no longer exists. It's called Levi Yisrael. Why does it no longer exist? A teacher... Funding runs out. That's when they, uh, that's when they close it. Yeah. yeah. Are you still active with Chabadnik? No, no, I've never been Chabadnik. 